Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, Grocery Store Stalker. How I Dodged an Entitled Mom's Obsession Over My Bag. The second story, Entitled Business Partner's Audacious Demand, Pay for Her Subscription. The third story, Hanging a Chair on the Door of My Place of Work, Which Couldn't Be Locked, Or How to Quit an SH Job in a Dramatic Way. The first story is, Entitled Mom Stalks Me Through the Grocery Store for My Bag. For some backstory, I'm a huge musical theater nerd and a few years ago I got to see The Phantom of the Opera in Seattle, and as a souvenir I bought a tote bag with the play's logo printed all over it that I'm still very fond of. Now, the show is playing in a theater in my area, and there's been a lot of local buzz about it. I went to see it this weekend and decided to carry my Phantom tote for a while, since my love of the show has been bolstered, and the bag is a great conversation starter for other theater nerds I may meet in public, who recognize the show that my bag references. Now, let's set the stage. A couple days ago, I went to the grocery store near my apartment to stock up on some pretty standard foodstuffs. And when I walked in, I saw a cashier I'm friendly with working the self-checkout kiosk, so I stopped to talk to him a few minutes. My bag was hanging over my shoulder within clear view of the doors. After a couple minutes into my chat, I felt a tap on my shoulder, so I turned around to address whoever was trying to get my attention and found a relatively normal-looking woman. Average size, normal clothing, normal hairstyle. Nothing to indicate this woman was a Karen type in any way. EM. Is that the Phantom of the Opera on your bag? Me. Happy to chat about one of my favorite musicals. Yeah. Do you like the show? EM. It's fine. I took my daughter last weekend to see it at local theater. She loves musicals. Me. Me too. I thought it was a really great show. The cast did a really great job and... EM cutting me off. Did you buy that bag there? I didn't see that bag at any of the booths. Me. Actually, I got this in Seattle when I saw the show a few years ago. EM. Oh, because there really weren't any souvenirs at the show my daughter liked. She would love that bag. Looks at me expectantly. Me. Um. Realizing what she wants. I'm sorry your daughter didn't find any keepsakes she wanted? EM. She was so disappointed she didn't have anything to remember the show by. She would love your bag. Love it. Me. Well, I know I love this bag. I hope the next time your daughter sees a show, she finds a souvenir she likes. I'm pretty nervous at this point because I'm very non-confrontational, and I've read plenty on this subreddit to know entitled parents like causing scenes. I gripped my bag very tightly, trying to hold it against my body with my elbow, and with both hands tightly on the straps. I've got to go shopping now. Excuse me. To my pleasant surprise, she didn't say anything else, so I really thought I'd gotten away without any crazy happening. I grabbed a basket and went to the cereal aisle. As I'm putting Cheerios into my basket, EM also enters the aisle. She doesn't have a cart or a basket, and she doesn't try to approach me again. Instead, she just stares at me. I decide to try and ignore her and go about business as usual, grabbing the things on my shopping list. Every aisle I go to, she follows me into. Every single one. Just staring at me. I'm certain she was just waiting for me to let my guard down. I go through self-checkout and she hangs by the discount bread rack nearby, still watching. Knowing she's probably not going to give this up when I leave the store, I flag down my acquaintance working the self-checkout kiosk and tell him I'm pretty sure that EM is going to follow me to my car. He's wary of her and walks me and my purchases out of the parking lot and doesn't leave until my bags are loaded and I'm in my car with my doors locked. I was still keeping an eye on EM and sure enough she left the store when I did, watching me as I got to my car. I saw her get into her own car, still watching me. My acquaintance who walked me out went back to the store, and I was left alone in my vehicle caught in an awkward staring match with EM, also in her car. She didn't even try to hide the fact she was watching me. It dawned on me that EM was likely to follow me home. So instead of taking my usual exit that would take me back to my apartment, I drove over to the exit that turned off onto the more major street. EM followed me like I expected. I sat there for a couple minutes at least waiting. See, there's an intersection at the corner of the grocery store with really long light times, so cars end up lining up a fair amount. I waited until the last possible second until that light turned green and unleashed a wave of cars, turning right just before they hit, leaving EM stranded to wait for them to pass if she wanted to follow me. I drove up the street and got on the highway. 
then took the exit for the next neighborhood over and took the back way to my apartment. My car is pretty noticeable. It's bright orange, and I didn't want to take any chances that EM may recognize my car going by the back the way I came. It seems I successfully ditched her, because no one has come banging on my door demanding I give them my phantom tote. Needless to say, I will be leaving that bag at home from now on. Update. For anyone who still cares about this incident, I have news. The EM has been banned from the grocery store. I haven't seen her since, but my acquaintance who works there saw me come in this morning and asked me if I remembered the crazy lady who wanted my bag. Turns out she's been in a few times since she followed me, but didn't pull anything until last week when she attacked a girl trying to steal her My Neighbor Totoro-themed jacket, again claiming her daughter would love it. Police were called. I have no clue if that poor girl is pressing charges, but I hope she is. Either way, Crazy EM is no longer allowed in the store, and us nerds can once again shop there with our nerd merchandise in peace. D. This is just a new level of entitlement from Karen, stalking over a bag. I'm really glad you're okay and not hurt except mentally. Honestly, the way she was watching you was like something out of a horror movie to me. It's creepy. You could simply call the police while driving, explain that you were being followed, and trick her into following you to the police station where the cops would be waiting for her. Something similar happened to me many years ago when I was a kid. We were about to go into our house. We have locked walls and gates, and then a black car with tinted black windows stopped next to us, so we couldn't see a D thing, and we stood like that for about 10 seconds before we drove off and this black car followed us. We pulled into the police station and as soon as the car saw where we were, it drove off quickly and we never saw it again. It was scary as hell. It's a good thing everything ends well, and Karen getting arrested is a good thing. The second story is... Entitled Business Collaborator Demands I Pay For Her Subscription I had the misfortune of partnering with Terrible Disaster of a Woman on a project, where we would split the work and then split the profit after the software was produced. I had worked with the woman on another project that had been really annoying due to her chronic procrastination, but we got it to market eventually. I needed to produce yet another project out for the sake of my income, so I reluctantly made the mistake of working with her again. I figured I could protect myself from all the pitfalls we had last time by covering everything in the contract and putting penalties in place. She didn't care if she breached a contract, she only cared if it affected her financially. This time she had to bring in another person to handle the work she'd procrastinated on so badly last time, or I wouldn't work with her. Things seemed to start off well. During milestone meetings she reported everything was on schedule. Then the next phase started and she needed to upload all the work to our server. We're a small company, so we use a subscription service for our server. I paid for her subscription to the same server so she could get her work up. The server is very useful for collaboration on huge projects, and I know she used the server for her own projects in addition to the one we collaborated on. Whatever. I go to check the work that's turned in, and it's one item that's less than a third done, and just blank files with the file names of what she was supposed to have done. WTF? I asked her why all this work she'd confirmed at the milestone meetings wasn't finished. She tried to claim it was done, she just needed to organize it. Days passed. It's done, but my internet capped my data and I can't put it up. It's done, but it's on my work computer. Tomorrow for sure. Then finally the person quit, and what you have is all he did. She was trying to get work out of him without paying for it. I found out later, and he bailed after doing that small amount I got. So in addition to being a lazy procrastinator, I learned she was a liar, cheats her workers, and she put the whole project and the thousands of dollars I'd put into it in jeopardy. I had to hire my own person and pay for him myself to get this project done. She was useless. She still kept a majority of her share, minus some penalties. Because that was the only way I could get her to agree to let me take over that part of it and ever get the project done. Finally, the software launched and I was done with her forever. I told her I was canceling her subscription to the server. If she wanted it, she would put her credit card on it and pay for it from now on. Why would you cancel that? I thought I can continue using it and have all my other work on there. Go ahead and continue using it. Just pay for it yourself. This is a lot of money in my country. Could you keep paying for it? No. Why not? This is how she was. She had no shame. She felt she could get whatever she wanted if she just harassed people so much that they would eventually just cave to her. And unfortunately, I'd have to cave to her in the past for the sake of the project. So she figured I'd do it again. I refused to engage further on this and told her to take her stuff off the server or pay for the subscription herself. Well, I'm not changing the credit card because I didn't know you would cancel it on me. I need at least six more months. I didn't engage with her. 
I had used a virtual card that I could turn on and off, because I knew better than to trust her to cancel the service. Also, this ensured she couldn't use the card anywhere else. I shut the card off. The next month, I can't get any of my files from the server. What's going on? You couldn't even give me another month. I'm never going to work with her again. I'm finished working with her now. I blocked her, then had to block her email too because she wouldn't give up. Pay for your own server subscription. This story is just incredibly comical, especially because of the behavior of this entitled employee. She really had an incredible belief that she could get everything she wanted just by imposing her will on others. Her touching request to continue paying for the server subscription is like wanting to have your cake and eat it too. If I were in your shoes, I'd disable the virtual card too, especially after all her attempts to get another month of subscription without paying. It's incredible how entitled people can be so shameless and not even realize how unfairly they treat others. This story also shows how important it is to be determined and stubborn in defending your rights and principles. And if she has to pay for the subscription herself, it may teach her more responsibility and respect for other people. And I wish you success in your future projects with partners who understand the concept of cooperation and mutual respect. The third story is, what's the worst work story or company experience you've got? For me, it was a few years back when I went over 36 hours without a break. I clocked in for my shift at 6 a.m. Thanksgiving Eve at a gas station. Someone was supposed to relieve me at 4 p.m. and didn't show her call. The gas attendant went home after staying three hours past his shift because no one showed up to relieve him either. Being that I was the assistant manager, I was in charge and the only one at the 24-hour location. I called everyone on the schedule and everyone ignored my calls. I called every store within miles and no one could help. I called the store manager, district manager, and even the regional manager to send someone, but they were all celebrating their holidays and ignored my calls and texts. I watched the sun go up, come down, go up, and come down again. In my state, you can't pump your own gas, and because I didn't have an attendant, I had to turn down every single customer for gas and get yelled at every time because it was the last gas station before a major highway. We had strict rules and told that we'd be fired if we ever closed the pumps, even if we couldn't pump gas because it would make us look bad. We were told that no one at any point in time can close the store because we were a 24-hour location and anyone who did so would be fired. One of the part-time employees finally showed up for her four-hour shift at 7 p.m. Thanksgiving Day. I was furious, but also so relieved I could go home and was afraid she'd leave me there if I flipped out. My fiancé warmed up my Thanksgiving dinner in the microwave, rubbed my back while I practically fell asleep into my food and then went to bed. I saw the same pattern happening a couple weeks later where no one showed up and were ignoring my calls. I took a chain and padlock out of the supply shed and chained the doors closed. They had no lock. My managers were ignoring me again, so I texted them that's the registers were closed and accounted for. Lights turned off, chains on the doors and where I hid the key for whomever showed up. Almost immediately, my phone started blowing up with calls from every one of my managers all the way up to the VP of sales for the entire Eastern region. I ignored every single call and message. The next morning I drove past the station and saw someone must have shown up and found out later that my manager and district manager were fired. But that was the end of that. This story is absurd. Working at a gas station on Thanksgiving, 36 hours non-stop, and no one comes to help. It's like something out of a horror movie. And how absurd that you're facing termination if you close the gas station, even though you can't pour gas for anyone. We have to look good. Seriously? And then you took a chain and a lock, locked the doors and hid the key. Best decision. And when you ignore calls and texts from all your bosses, that's just masterpiece. But in the end, the managers and the director were fired. The finale they deserved. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Have a good day.